taught me about music. Anders taught me art. From Gerard, I learned about sadism. Roger taught me Swedish and how to identify mushrooms. From Bruce, I learned that some people have webbed feet. But what did I learn from Schmelman? Imagine Mark Messier of the New York Rangers, dress him in black t-shirt, black Levi's, and a black Converse high tops. Give him a Mos Moscow accent, an iPhone 6, and a Mac. Now, shave his head completely bald. You now have a picture of Schmelman. We entered into a May-December relationship with yours truly as a chilly December twilight. Schmelman suffered from trichophobia, a fear of hair, lint, fuzz, eyelashes, and towels. I gave the felines away, preparing for cohabitation. My Tribeca loft seemed cozier than his Crown Heights Lubavitcher walk-up, where every door had a sign proclaiming, the Messiah is coming. Schmelman sported a modest sticker, Messiah. I devoted 12 hours a day entirely to Schmelman's career. My PR campaign made Michael Ovitz look like a Vermont housewife, resulting in magazine features, book deals, invitations from Alliance Graphique Internationale. Balzac has said, a woman of 20 will do nothing for you, a woman of 40, everything. Hmm. It lasted two years until I had a serious problem, and Schmelman was AWOL. My exact words were, if this is what it means to have a boyfriend, I don't want one. Cut to summer studio, mosquito preserve. Friends remarked on my fierce domesticity. The car was painted silver, the mailbox blue, the porch was festooned with an original Rosenwald. The canvas was empty. September, meeting Schmelman at Young Guns, the art director's club show of designers under 30, I added, who have been nurtured, encouraged, and supported by broken dowagers over 40. <laughs> Meet Hiroko, isn't she cute? Beside him was a prepubescent nymphette of 79 pounds. Although I weigh in it considerably more, I took care not to crush his delicate flower as she expressed admiration for this ancient, decrepit oak of design wisdom. I careened, I careened out the door into the rain, a backdrop for my mental breakdown. The stage was set for the recurring Schmelman syndrome, the deadly formula, one bald guy in a black t-shirt and black Levi's resembles nothing so much as another bald guy in black t-shirt and black Levi's. At the film forum, I was watching The Knights of Kiberia, Fellini's film about a plucky little prostitute who believes she's found true love until the moment he steals her pocketbook. I carried a small aluminum bucket and was weeping silently into it when I detected a rounded skull in row four center. The ovoid apparition repeated itself at MoMA, Japonica, and most appallingly, Pinkberry. A girl ought to feel safe at Pinkberry. At Aunt Ruth's memorial at Emmanuel, my sanity took a nosedive. Here's the kernel of the poodle. I submit to you this. New York hosts a disproportionate number of persons who prefer an all-black outfit, n'est-ce pas? Especially the viper's nest we'll call the design community. Of the 981,789 inhabitants of Lower Manhattan, three quarters dress exclusively in black. Half of these are bald, some intentionally. <laughs> Schmelman sightings reached a crescendo in June of 47.3 per week. By August, I stopped going out of the house. <laughs> the baldness, the iPhones, the little black backpacks. When forced to emerge, I avoided Apple stores, pas quotidiennes, streets per perpendicular or parallel to Canal, housed in 8th and 14th. <laughs> Any place coffee was served was verboten. I avoided eggs, potatoes, pebbles, anything smooth, <laughs> round, or Russian. Ironically, few of these sightings on closer inspection were actually Schmelman. If a non-clone variety did appear, I took care not to disturb it, particularly during mating season. In the fullness of time, Schmelman published an ugly book wherein he thanked everyone I had introduced him, lost his looks, and reproduced. I wish them no harm. 
with yoga, cognitive behaviors, behavior therapy, therapy, and a good serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, I have ventured as far as Marpedi. <laughs> also, I've got my eye on a seven-foot-tall, pink-pigtailed albino hunchback with an Icelandic accent who dresses exclusively in yellow. 